Father. And say, Father, we bring repentance before you. Like the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 10. God sorrow brings repentance that leads to salvation and leaves no regret, but worldly sorrow brings death. I want us to pray and say, Father, we repent so that we are converted, so that our sins are blotted out, so that the times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord in our lives in this season, in the lives of the people of the nations, in the lives of, of the souls of your creation, in the lives of your people around the world. We come, my Lord, in repentance. I want us to come before the before God with a broken spirit and a repented heart. For the word says, a broken spirit and a repented heart, the Lord will not reject. I want us just for two minutes to pray and repent before God just for two minutes for a sense. Let us go before God. Let us yield before God and surrender our hearts, our minds, our souls, our spirits. Let us pray, saints. Let us open our minds and pray. Eternal Father, glorious God, this morning, we thank you, Father. We worship you. We give praise and honor, my Lord, in the mighty name of Yeshua, Hamasiah. My Lord, we come before the throne of grace, oh Father, in repentance and confession, oh God. We have come before the throne of grace, oh Lord, oh Father, we have failed you before. We know, oh Father, we are fallible. We know our weaknesses, oh Father. We know that we are insufficient on our own. We know, oh Lord, that we are fallible. We know that we are weak, oh Father, and we know that you are made strong in our weaknesses, oh Father. We come before the throne of grace as we are, as we are, oh God. We come before the throne of grace in our weaknesses, in our insufficiency, in our fallibility, oh God. Jehovah, we come in repentance and confession before the throne of the Father. We come with a broken spirit and a repentant heart, oh Father, for we know that you will show mercy with, to a broken spirit. You will show compassion to a broken spirit and a repentant heart. We come, my Lord, that we receive your compassion. We come, my Lord, that your mercies are bound in us. And tell us, Father, glorious God, we thank you, Lord, we repent before the throne of grace. We surrender, we come before you, oh Lord, as we are. We hide nothing. We hide nothing, oh Father, for there is nothing that can be hid from you, O Jehovah. There is nothing that we can hide from you, eternal Father. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, and by the power of his blood, eternal Father, glorious God, we thank you, Father, we thank you, Jehovah, we thank you, Lord, we thank you, Lord, we thank you, Lord, my God, we are repentant, we have forgiven, O Lord, we come before your throne, O Father, please, O Father, wash us clean, with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. We come boldly before the throne of faith. We come in boldly before the throne of faith. Before the throne of God. Before the throne of our Lord and our Savior. Lord, we come as we are. There is nothing that we can hide from you, Lord. We come, oh Lord, in the blood of Jesus Christ. For our righteousness is in peace. And then our Father, Lord, as God, we thank you. We bless you, Lord, for the Lord. That you have given us to repent before you, Lord. That you have given us to forgive us, Lord. Confess our sins before the Lord, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, O Christ, we pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Saints. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Since just before we started, I, I highlighted that. Um, hallelujah. Just before we started, I highlighted that um, the word of God is full of promises for those that walk in the path that God has ordained for our life. I want us to take the promise today. I want to take this promise that he gave us in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9. After we repent, because repentance is a continuous process, every time we have repented, we seek the face of the Lord, and we want to run with this promise that he has given us. In the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9, the word of God says, but it is written, I has not seen, nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared 
for those who love him. Hallelujah. The fact that we are here this morning repenting, the fact that we have risen up this morning to seek the face of the Lord, I believe it is proof, it is assurance, it is evidence that we love God. It is evidence that we have been called by God for my, and, and that God has shown us his grace to be here this morning. And I pray says that as we Seek God. Let us understand and have a revelation of this promise that there is a promise. There is something that has never been seen that God has planned for us. There is something that God will want to show us because he says in Jeremiah chapter 29, verse, 20, chapter 29, verse 13, that if you seek him with all of your heart, he will show himself to us. And Jeremiah chapter 33, verse 3, he says, call unto me and I will show you great and mighty things things that you have never seen. I want us for just a minute to appropriate the promises of God by faith as is uh, expropriated in, in, the Hebrew, in, the, in, in the book of Hebrews chapter 11, because everything is by faith. I want us to give thanks to God. I want to us to do just for a minute to do a prayer of thanksgiving because thanksgiving, praising God, praising God, Praising God is, is the one thing that God cannot do for himself. Let us come before God just for a minute in thanksgiving and praise. Father, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, for this morning. We thank you, Lord, for the might. We thank you, Lord, for the goodness. We thank you, Lord, for the glory. We thank you, Lord, for the revelation, oh, Father, that you have given us. Eternal Father, we come before the throne of grace with thanksgiving and praise for everything that we have done in our lives and everything that you have promised us and everything that you have given us, oh, Father. We thank you, Lord, for revealing, oh, Father, how to access your glory and your power. For you say, by faith, oh, Father, Everything is possible by faith, oh Lord, we thank you. By faith, oh Lord, that you have given us, oh Father. Understand, oh Father, that great men, oh Father, were able to influence and change the dimensions of the nations, oh Father, by faith. And we say thank you, Father, for your goodness. We thank you, my Lord, for praise and honor to the land. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we have prayed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. All right. God bless you. God bless you, my brother. God bless you. Thank you so, so much. All right. Ma'am Clarita, please stay. You can continue. God bless you, ma'am. Mama Clarita, please, it's your turn. Amen. Amen. I'm sorry, I was still trying to unmute. Shalom, shalom, beloved saints. Amen. This Amen. morning we'll be praying for the unreached people groups. Uh, there are so many people that have not received the gospel in this world. We have got more than 3 billion people that have not heard about Christ let alone they've not <coughs> seen a Bible or even have one. Uh, what is a people group? A people group is not the same as a country. It is members of a people group that share the same ethnic identity. They have a common language, a common religion and a common history. Whereas a country is defined by a fixed geographical border and a central government, and it has got more than one people group living within it. Whereas people groups on the other hand often spill over political borders and live in more than one country. Like the people group that we're going to be dealing with this morning, you find them in India, you find them in Sri Lanka, you find them in Nepal. So they are not actually in one country, but they are in different countries, but they have something that is common. When Jesus commanded his followers, us to make disciples of all nations in Matthew 28 from verse 16 to 20, he used the word ethnic, which refers to the people groups and not to geopolitical countries. That's why it's always important that when God sends you to a particular country per se, you actually ask him which people group 
are you sending me to? That will also help you to keep focus, understand your people group, study more about them, get revelation and get access into their hearts. And there are many <laughs> Christians in a people group, but you find that in most cases, those Christians don't go out to reach to their own people and they keep the gospel to themselves. And in some places with the unreached people groups, you find that they have a, a small percentage of Christians and what defines them also as an unreached people groups is because they are not fully trained to reach out to their own people. They, have got, uh, they don't have resources. They don't have Christian workers. They don't have people that are actually willing to share the gospel for them. They, they are suffering. Those that have got the gospel, they keep it to themselves, maybe because they are afraid of going out there. So you find that in, in some people groups, we have a very, very small percentage of people that actually know about Christ. Why did Jesus say that we should reach to all people groups? It is because many are perishing without the opportunity to hear the good news even once. And it seems like most of us, we are called to the cities. We are called to, re, to convert the converted instead of going out to those that have never heard about the gospel. And my question always is, are we sure that we are called to where we are or we just went with the wave to say people want, are going to America, people are going to Europe. I, I remember one time one bishop said, oh, you know what, Clareta, he actually used my other name, Sipo Senkosi, I would like to go with you to the nations. And I was like, okay, that's nice. Bishop said, no, I want to carry your bags. And I was like, okay, that will be fine, but that's too humbling for a bishop to carry my bags. So at the time I was going to Sudan, so I invited him. And he said, no, 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 I don't want to go with you to Sudan. I, invite me when you're going to Europe, not to Sudan. Then I said, no, then you're not the right candidate to go with me. Why? Because we want to go where people are already converted, where things are already in right place, instead of us going out there to pioneer the gospel to the unreached people groups. Matthew 24 verse 14 says, and this gospel of the kingdom will be proclaimed throughout the whole world as a testimony to all nations, and then the end will come. Most of us were crying for the end to come, but guess what? When we still have more than 3 billion people that other people want to eliminate on earth and go to hell, we have never heard the, about Christ, and we are busy crying, Lord, come Lord Jesus, come. When he comes, what will he get? Three billion people going to hell because we are afraid to go to them. I believe that Jesus was clear in stating that his gospel will be preached to all nations, all ethnic people groups before he will return. Maybe there is a people group that the Lord has called you for, but have you found that people group that God has called you for. So we need even in our churches to be churches that and ministries that will adopt and reach people groups and bring the gospel to them. We can pray for them. We can contribute finances for them to receive the gospel, we can buy Bibles for them, we can translate Bibles for them. We can, there is so much to do for us to hold hands with others that are already in the field 
to reach out to these people because not one person can do it, but it's a collective thing for us to reach to the unreached people groups, sorry. The data is already there. All that you need to do is to look at the data with a prayerful heart and the Lord will drop the type of people that you need to reach out to. Revelation 7 verse 9 says, after this I looked and behold a great multitude that no one could number from every nation, from all tribes and all peoples and languages standing before the throne and before the lamb, clothed in white robes with palm branches in their hands. Here we see the apostle John giving us a glimpse of what worship in heaven would look like where all nations, not all countries, but all nations will come before the Lord and worship in their tongues. Hallelujah. In their own languages. Yes. In their own comfort sphere without us taking them out of where God planted them and bringing them to where we want them to be so that we feel comfortable that we are ministering to them. There is a place here in, in, in South Africa, if you go to Lindela, it's one of those places that are very heartbreaking. It's a, it's a place where most of the foreigners that don't have their papers are arrested and kept. And believe me, you, that's where you can find and get contacts on how to reach to a number of people groups in different nations because they are waiting to be deported back to their nations and all that they need is Christ. And I've always said to the Lord, I might not have money to give to them, but I can give them the gift of the gospel and going to where they are and giving them the gospel to take it back to their nations. They might thought that they think that they came to South Africa for finances and for wealth, but let me be the one that will give them their last gift before they depart from this nation. So the Bible has shown us that it is not and made it very clear that God will not be satisfied until there are people from every people group represented in his kingdom. How many people groups have you given to the Lord? How many have you adopted? I picked up a people group called the Viswakama and they are mainly in Sri Lanka. That's the country that I picked up. And there are 79 unreached people groups in Sri Lanka, which is 0.5% of the world's unreached people groups. More than 3 million unreached people groups, which is less than 1% of the world's population. As I say that this specific group of people, you find it in India, Sri Lanka, and Nepal. Their day-to-day -day life is they play a key role in their economy by spreading culture, religion, and civilization through Hindu art. If ever you have taken time to look at the Hindu art, you, you realize that it is one of those arts that has captured the world and it's beautiful. They've got this belief of these gods that they make. And to think that some of those gods are actually made of pure gold, it's heartbreaking. And the way they evangelized, if you go to these places, every 500 meters to a kilometer, there is a temple, there is a God. You'll find that in their homes, they've got thousands and thousands of handmade gods. So you realize that the real man, the spirit of God in them is looking to connect with the creator. 
but then they have got their own man-made ways of trying to connect with the Godhead. We just don't have to be always on the negative, but to ask God to open our eyes to see the strength that he put in a people group, which the enemy has stolen because the enemy comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. He has got nothing of his. All that he does, he steals from what God has given to mankind. Their, their belief system mostly is Hinduism, which is about more than 97% of people there are Hindus. And Christianity is about 2%. They are unreached because they don't have the resources and there is fear that if they go out and preach the gospel to others, they might be killed. And when we speak about Christianity here, mind you that the so-called charismatic Pentecostal Christians, we love our comfort zone. The ones that claim to have the truth, they love their comfort zone. We don't want to go out. Jesus is ours and he belongs to us and to no one else. And you'll find that the Christianity that they're talking about is the religious Christianity, the Roman Catholic, the Anglicans. I mean, the, the real one, not the ancient one, not those ones that have received Christ. Whereby you find that when they carry a cross, that's what they call Christianity. As long as they have a wooden cross that they bring before them, it's Christ before me oh. and everything behind me. For them, that's Christianity. And guess what? Those people, as much as we can undermine them, they can stand their ground for what they believe that they are Christians. They can suffer for their Christianity, but it's also unveiled Christianity. And we need to take the gospel to such people. The history of these people, the Vish Vishvakaman is they follow a god that is called Vishvakaman, a Hindu presiding deity of all craftsmen and architects who they claim as their ancestor. I wonder if they are not connected with the Freemasons because the Freemasons also started as a, a god of architect. They, he is referred to as the divine architect and divine carpenter as he is believed to have created the weapons, palaces and kingdoms of several Hindu gods. So in other words, this god is a creator. They, have replaced God, the creator of the world with this God. He's also known as Vish Vishwakama Puja, Kanya Sankranti and Bandra Sankranti depends on which region he fall, is being worshiped. They have different names. And this Vishwakama Puja marks the birth and anniversary of Lord Vishwakama the son of Lord ba Brahma and the creator of the world. You can imagine why these people are so fundamentalist and so violent to, be, to protect their <coughs> religion is because they believe that their God created everything. He created the world. So they have to worship him because they are there because of who he is. And this, this, the celebration of this God is usually, it falls in September or October, depending on the moon and the sun. So in other words, this worship goes also with the moon and the sun worship. And they also use the stars 
Belio, and the Vigo. It is celebrated, the day is celebrated much, with much pomp by members of architecture, engineering communities, as well as skilled laborers, including smiths, artisans, craftsmen. Can you imagine the entire economy? And even those that are doing IT, they are also involved. No wonder why the best IT people, where do you find them? India. It's because of the worship of this God. They, on this day, they give themselves and their tools to arrest and pray for protection and success to their God. But you find that the so-called Christian businesses are even opened on Sunday. God will understand that the economy is not good. And the idols and the photos of this God are often spotted in the offices, factories, shop floors of such workers. And this God is very special to them. Even during this coronavirus, they will celebrate him in their homes. And they pray for the success yeah. to their creator. They celebrate him and thank him for the skills and the creativity that he has given them. They take everything, they give it back to their God because he's the one that he has given them all the skills, whatever that they have, they submit it to this God. Can you imagine if it was me and you taking everything that we have, be it our restaurants, our skills at home, whatever that the Lord has given us and giving it to the Lord, having a day where we worship God to say, Lord, you gave me the skill to make clothes. I give this skill back to you. Can you imagine what will be in this world? But we always keep our things and say, it's because I went to school. It's my own strength, but other people, they understand that whatever they have, it comes from a deity that is above them. This God is known to have designed some cities for their gods and gardens. So he actually rules the entire creation. And all that they have has come from him. And in other words, he is compared to God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the creator, the ancient of days, the creator of the heavens and the earth. They have made this God of theirs to be equivalent to this incomparable God that we worship. He is also credited with designing all the flying chariots of the gods and all their weapons. Our God has got weapons that we use, but they also given him this. May the Lord have mercy on us. I want us to take time today, having said the above, I wonder what is in your heart as of now. Is it none of your business? You have Jesus and you are going to heaven or it's Lord have mercy. I want you to repent as someone that is a Vishkama, not somebody outside. Get into their shoes. Realize how lost you are. 
realize how ignorance right from your forefathers has led you to replacing God, the creator, the ancient of days who can never be carved by any human hands. And you have replaced him with this God that can be carved or drawn by human hands where people have to put their own art in him. Because when you go to the different places, you find that the people carve or draw this God in different forms. So as much as he carries the same name and you find him in this temple, he is not omnipresent. He has to be lifted from one place to another by human hands. See yourself in that position of ignorance, in that position of spiritual blindness, in this position of being so lost, desperate, and cry unto God this morning to say, Lord, as a Vishkwama, today, have mercy on us, for we are lost. We have missed it. We have fallen short of your glory. We have gone astray. It's only you who can tear the veil as you did tear the veil of the temple, tear this veil of darkness and let our spirits be enlightened. Let our minds be brought back to you. May the Lord turn the, their spiritual hunger to be the right spiritual hunger for the Lord God Almighty. May he intervene. May he invade the territory and bring them back to him. Mm -hmm. Can we pray? Can we really take time to pray? Mm -hmm. Identify yourself with these people and see your need for Christ. Pray in the first person, not in the there and them, but in the me and my people who have fallen short of your glory. Can we pray? Father, in the mighty name Father of God, Jesus. I come before you, God. I come to you, Lord God. I put myself in your in the ashes of Father God. I put myself in the ashes of Lord God in the name of Jesus. I come to you as one of them, Lord God, as one of those people, Father God, as one of those people who are actually living. For heaven is prayed away from us and created my God. So much of God, I cover myself and all the things I to say it and to the mighty name of Jesus and the mighty name of the Lord Jehovah for giving us what Jehovah God and Father for worshiping other gods beside Thank you. 
Thank you. I didn't notice that. We see that these people, they get their, they believe that they get their skills to do all this art from the kingdom of darkness, from this God. And they will have a day where they give back whatever they have and thank this God for what they believe has given them. I want us to go before God as these wonderful people that understand what worship is. That they should not worship what they have been given, but they should take it back to the giver of every gift. And we ask God to forgive us. Mm for worshiping idols with the skills, the talents, the gifts, the businesses that he has given to us. Just see the strength of their worship and just flip it to the positive side. You will see that you are nowhere nearer to them. Let us ask God to turn their commitment to be the commitment of the Lord God Almighty. There, there was a time, I think that was 2018, yeah, 2018, I was in India and I happened to move around most of the temples praying there. And as I was moving around, there were things that really touched and challenged me in my walk with the Lord. As much as I kept on asking Jesus, Lord Jesus, are you sure you died for these people? But there's something that really touched me as I entered into one of the temples of this God. It was the commitment of the temple keepers. You know, the way they will be dressed and they've smeared themselves and all that. And there was a young couple that had a child. 
and the child was still young and they had to come and dedicate the child to this God. And this man is fearsome. Man, I mean fearsome. You know, when somebody is demon possessed, there is no beauty in them. And when the parents gave the child to this man, the child broke into a deep cry. But because the parents believed they were doing the right thing, dedicating a child to God, they couldn't understand that the spirit of a child is being defiled and is refusing. But the level of commitment is what struck me. Uh. To say, Lord, have mercy. May we have the same passion, the same zeal, the same commitment like these people do have to save you in truth and in spirit. So may we pray that the Lord will turn around this worship with the worship of the one and true living God, the Alpha and the Omega. And that even as they give back whatever and worship, whatever they've been given back to their God, may the Lord give us that ability, that strength also to say, we give everything to you. Just like the 24 elders, when they lie down and worship the almighty God. The Bible says they remove their crowns, their skills, their capabilities and say, we worship you with everything that we have. May it be so that the Lord will turn around for these people and that even when they come to the kingdom of God, they will worship him in truth and in spirit, in even more and not less. Can we pray and repent? It's still in the first person, not there or them. It's me. Can we pray? Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, Amen. We ask for your mercy. Come before you. Come before you. Come before you. And I ask in my repent face. I have come to the God of salvation. Come before I have moved my child. I ask for mercy, O Lord God, Father, for the way that I have my child. For the way that I have my child. That we have been doing. Father God, I come to you, O Lord God. Father God, I come to you, O Lord God. I do not know. There was another God. O God, forgive me. Lord, I pray right now and I that you may redirect me to in my worship, that you may redirect me in my zeal of other people, that you may worship me as the Lord God of my soul. Father, redirect me, redirect my zeal of other people, redirect me in the name of my nation of other God in worshiping this false God, Father, to worship you, to worship you, my God, yes, Yahweh, yes, Lord, the creator of the heavens. Jesus, my 
Amen. 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 the Amen. 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 Resting strongly upon these people. I want us to pray and repent that the Lord will turn around their desire, their passion for spreading art, civilization of their art and religion to be that which will be used for spreading the good news of Jesus. It is the evangelists that are spreading this art, spreading their civilization, their idol worship, who are spreading this religion. But they can be turned around to spread the good news of Jesus, the good news of the kingdom of God. They can move away from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of God. They can take their skills, their gifts back to the Lord because he's the giver of every good gift. The enemy has no gift. Can we pray? Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we want to thank you that every good gift comes from you, my God. And we ask you, Father, that you will turn around, my God, this passion, this desire for evangelism that is made to the Lord spreading art. Father, we pray. I pray, O Father God, that you may be direct our passion, Father, of that may direct our passion, O Lord God, of architecture. Yes, Father, of art, O Lord God. Uh, for the Lord, purposes in of the mighty name of Jesus, Jesus. Jesus. Oh Jesus. God, Father, whatever it is that you want, I pray right now in right the name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus, we give you praise, 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 Arise, <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Lastly, I want us to pray that the Lord will forgive us for our spiritual blindness, our ignorance of who God is, and that the veils, you know, from generation to generation, it's layers and layers of veils of blindness, of ignorance that they should fall from our eyes and we'll be able to see who God is. May those veils fall. It's like I'm, 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 I'm in, in the Ganges River, you know, looking at all those people that are there looking for 
for help from the Ganges River waters where people are being bent and thrown into the river. It's so smelly. When you go there, you can spend a week without eating because the stench of human flesh is all around you. And even their priests are waiting for meat that has not been properly bent to eat it and finish up your sins. Let us cry to God to say, Lord, let that veil of darkness, that veil of ignorance, that veil that has covered people from generations to generations, may it be torn apart, just like the veil on the temple was torn apart. May your light penetrate, strike your lightning and your thunder and reach out to the hearts of your people. In the name of Jesus, can we pray? Oh Lord, our Father, we Pastor Light, I went over to you. Jesus. So much, Mama Clarita. Quite more than an eye opening, it is heart opening. It is heart opening. Um, I'm so grateful to God for the instruction that this month of July, which is a very strategic month, the beginning of the second half of the year, which is very key, what God plans to do in 2021, which is not just about giving us, you know, another president or giving us, you know, a new cathedral, but that the nations, the unreached people of the world might be unreached. 
this is the heartbeat of God that the unreached might be reached in a hurry, in a hurry. One of the statements I captured in the course of Mama Clarita uh, sharing is that Christ, you know, that God is not satisfied until all the unreached people are reached. Say so that until all families, all tribes, all languages are reached with the gospel of the kingdom, Christ is not yet satisfied because he died for all of them. He died for all of them. And he is not satisfied, no matter the millions of people that are on fire in Nigeria, in South Africa, in America, he is not satisfied seeing one extra language, one extra tribe, one extra people group that are not yet harvested for him. And on this purpose, on, I mean, for this purpose, we bow our knee to pray, to knock at the gate of heaven, to arise and mobilize missionaries, mobilize resources, mobilize intercessors, because there are three dimensions of weapons or tools for the harvest or the reaching of the unreached people groups. That is the tool of the goers, men, women who will go. And today, missionary outreaches have been so repositioned that you can go physically, you can go you know, electronically, you can go in electronically. All we need is strategy to maximize the internet in different ways to reach out to the unreached. The unreached, by the way, are not only people who are in the rural places. There are people in the mega cities who are not reached. And when you talk about people group, people group, like Mama was saying, you know, there are people with identical, you know, um, culture, identical, you know, philosophy, identical mindset, identical, you know, um, cultural and traditional practices. So you can have a people group among professionals. You can have a people group among, you know, um, different categories of people, not only people who are in a particular geographical location. Now, different strategic ways of reaching the unreached, reaching the unreached. Prostitutes are a people group. They are a people group because they have the same ideology, the same culture, the same practice, the same language. It's a people group. Gangsters are a people group. Uh, what you call the Sangomas. Sangomas in South Africa, that's the language. We, uh, the Sangomas means in Nigeria, we call them juju priests, native doctors. In South, South Africa, we call them Sangomas. Now, native doctors are a people group. Sangomas, a people group. Now, there are every, there, there, is, there is this cricks crying in the heart of God, this passion in the heart of God to reach all the people groups. Presidents of nations are a people group. People in Senate are a people group. Lawyers are a people group. Doctors are a people group. These are different categorization of people group. But there is also the one Mama was talking about, people who are in a particular geographical region, which is the, the traditional description of people group. Now, God wants if these present day believers, you and I, to use all available means to reach these different available people before the enemy flushes them in a speed, in a hurry to hell, where they will suffer eternally. So how do we do this? That is why we are praying. There is people to do the going in different ways, physically and electronically. There are people to raise the funding, to raise the funding, the funding. There are people, like what she's saying, there are some of these places you go to, if you put a thousand dollar on ground, you will see how it will be like going to where the ants are and you put, you put sugar there. You see how the, the ants will run to the sugar. Just food can change a lot in the mindset of such people. Just garments, just shelter, can do a lot in rewinding, in shaping their mindset. 
So resources are needed to reorientate them, to know that there is a God who loves, a God who cares, a God who is interested, who is concerned about their concerns. There are the intercessors going through intercession, and that is what we are doing here. Praying and praying. Please don't think that what you are doing is not relevant. An intercessor is a go is a is a is 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 very intercessory aspect of this assignment is so important because carry all the resources, carry all the anointing. If there is no intercession to water the ground, to deal with the covenants on the ground, to deal with the curses on the ground, it will swallow up the resources, swallow up all the people that are sent and they will be disappointed. That's why intercession is the fundamental basics that will water the ground, till the ground, prepare the ground for the seed to flourish. So, dear brothers and sisters, we are in for something very important, which eternity will celebrate you for being part of this assignment. So, I want us to take a communion, and uh, we are following up this thing tomorrow morning, and the whole of this month, we are dealing with reaching the unreached with the gospel of the kingdom. And that's why I told us to and invite some pastors, in fact, some pastors, church leaders, to be partaker of some of these revelations God will be bringing through different people the Lord has laid in my heart to bring on board to be helping us to see different bits and pieces of this whole thing. No man knows it all. You know, no man knows it all. Invite some leaders, intercessory leaders, pastors, ministers of the gospel, because we want to see how to maximally enlighten ourselves so we can take the gospel to the unreached people, lockdown or no lockdown, economic condition notwithstanding, the gospel must reach every tongue and tribe and language and community and city and nation of the world. Now, I want you to open with me to the book of Matthew chapter 9. I want us to use this scripture to bless the communion. He said in verse 35, Matthew chapter 9 from verse 35, and Jesus went about all the cities and villages and teaching teaching in the synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom, preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. But when he saw the multitude, when he saw the multitude, he was moved with compassion on them because they fainted, they fainted and war and we are scattered abroad as sheep having no shepherd. As Mama Clarita was speaking, I was just imagining Christ Jesus in this portion we read, going into those communities, those people group in Nepal and India and Sri Lanka. And he, he, he was just this, I, I was like seeing Jesus among those people in this portion. And what did he say? Then said he unto his disciples, the harvest truly is plentiful or plenteous, but the laborers, who are the laborers? The laborers are the goers, the laborers are the preachers, the laborers are the intercessors, the laborers are the givers, the givers, the philanthropists, the givers. He said, the laborers are few. Pray ye, therefore, the Lord of harvest, that he will send forth laborers into the harvest. Now, the Lord laid in my heart that we should take this communion to provoke the laborer inside of us. There is the laborer in you. There is the missionary in you. There is that evangelist. There is that pastor. There is that prophet. There is that apostle. There is that teacher. There is that intercessor. There is that music, music, you know, a minister in you. There is that divine redeeming grace of God in you that need to wake up. Lord, as I partake of your flesh and partake of your blood, let the redeemer in me wake up. Let the missionary in me wake up. Let the laborer in me arise. I cannot be drowned because of my personal life issues, the community issues, or my family issues, and the societal issues, my career and professional issues. I will let it bury the laborer inside of me, the missionary inside of me. I will let it let my, this communion awake the, the, the 
the redeemer, the laborer, the Christ that is inside of me, that is meant for touching the nations and reaching the unreached. Shall we take up the communion element? Thank you, mighty God. Male so bandine trepoto sata, kilando ilebrana tusian te panazia trash. Ingrid de Katana Baduski, Ledina Patazum Broduni Kapataski do Ponto Zetra. Lord, in the name of Jesus, as we partake of this communion element this morning, Father, I ask you that you will cause there to be an awakening of the divinity of that laborer, of that missionary, of the Christ in us, inside of us, the Christ inside of us. Let the spirit of Christ in us wake up. Let the spirit of the laborer wake up. Let let the spirit of the missionary wake up. Let the spirit of the redeemer wake up. Let the spirit of the deliverer wake up. Let that deliverer capacity, that deliverer gift, that deliverer instinct, let it rise, let it wake up, and let your name be glorified. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please go ahead and partake of the communion. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor for the privilege. Yes, Lord, to partake of the communion, the meal for the laborers, the meal for the sent ones, the sent ones, the meal for the remnant, the meal for the deliverers, for the redeemers of the world, the redeemers of the world, the saviors of the world, the Christs of the world, we partake of our covenant meal this morning. Let it strengthen our body. Let it strengthen our spirit. Let it strengthen our spirit, our soul, our body, and let it sharpen our mind. Let it sharpen our spirit. Let it make us instruments, sharp threshing instruments, sharp threshing instruments to the glory of your name. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Let's bless those who are having their fasting today. Let's commit them into the hand of God. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for those who have set their hearts to wait. Having chosen this day to seek the Lord, to wait in the name of Jesus. Amen. The stamina and all understanding. We continue to serve you and pray that you may have us and may find you, O Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we pray that you will not hide my father from the other things of the spirit unto them. In Jesus' mighty name, thank you, Holy God. In Jesus' mighty name. Father, we thank you. For what you have downloaded to us today. Thank you for the privilege to hear with the things we've heard. Thank you for the privilege to pray according to your heartbeat. You say, when we pray according to your the messages and all the uh, strategic words that were spoken, the Lord bless you. I want to encourage everyone to please um, keep track of these things that we are doing here. 
all our recordings are in our um, YouTube channel, Global Harvest Prayer Network. That's our YouTube, YouTube channel. Go there, you see all our ministrations, all the teachings, all our meetings, they are all there. So please subscribe to it, like it, and connect your friends to it. Let them go in there and see a whole catalog of inspiring and life-changing, you know, illuminating ministrations, teachings, and, and prayer meetings. All right. The Lord bless you and cause you to be a living testimony, a living wonder to this generation. May the Lord cause you to be among those that will be a signpost and announce among what used to announce to this generation. You will be among those God we used to prove to this generation. He is a faithful God. He is a rewarder, a rewarder, a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. You will be among those God we use to show to the generation that there are still men, there are still women who are serving God with and with all sense of consecration and integrity. You will be among the elect that will prove the enemy wrong in this time, that will prove to this generation that God is he that sees in the heaven and he rules in that face of man. That is your testimony. That is your portion in the name of Jesus. No sickness will dwell in your body. Coronavirus shall not near you. You are too secure. Mm -hmm. You are too secure, too defended, too inoculated with the blood of Jesus and with the power of the Holy Spirit that the enemy and viruses cannot dwell in your body, cannot dwell in your body. In the name Amen. of Jesus Christ, you are blessed. You are blessed beyond curse. You are blessed Amen. beyond curse. You are blessed beyond Amen. curse. You and you are more than a conqueror, more than a conqueror because Amen. Jesus up on the cross for you. You are Amen. blessed. Amen. Amen. And surely, good God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. And we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, should go through with us now. Amen and amen. Thank you, Jesus. Time to goodbye. Thank you, Pastor Lai. Thank you, Pastor Lai. Thank you, Pastor Lai. Yes, you all. Thank you.